Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and today we're taking a look at some little knives. These are the upcoming smaller knives from Devo Knives. This one here is already released, is actually available right now at the time I'm filming this, although only a couple colorways are left. And this is the prototype of a new knife that I'm not exactly sure when this is going to come because this hasn't even entered in production yet. Uh, actually no, I think they put the order in. Okay, quick update from the future because it's been a few months since I filmed this and the nip is actually ready to drop. So Kevin and Colin are going to be bringing the two variants that they'll be selling direct through Devo Knives to Blade Show West as kind of a soft open. But the actual drop itself is going to be on October 19th. The variants that they're selling are both in some kind of fat carbon, camo carbon. I don't exactly remember. They're really pretty cool looking. But there's also two additional versions. The version you're seeing in this video, the full tie, that's going to be a White Mountain Knives exclusive. And there's also a completely blacked out version at traditional pocket knives. I know for sure that the White Mountain Knives is going to drop at the exact same time, that 1019 date. I don't know for sure about the TPK, but it probably is. I also don't know what the price is going to be on those two, but I believe the one that Kevin and Colin are selling directly through Devo is going to be 175 bucks. I fell in love with this knife and I'm absolutely going to be picking one of them up. I'm personally going to be going for that full tie one like I'm showing in this video. I love it to death. And if you're like me and going for that one, don't forget that uh, you know White Mountain Knives offers Nerd10 as a discount code. When you check out, you can get 10% off of anything in the shop. Pretty confident it's going to work for this one too. These are both tremendously freaking cool. Okay, let's get started with this guy. This is the Pony Stout. It is the smaller brother of the full size stout. So I have a full small details review of this knife up and the short version is it's actually a really, really solid knife. One of the things that happened between that, that prototype that I reviewed and this is that the blade stock got just a little bit thinner. This is 0.138 and it got much, much better of a grind. This was made by QSP, I think, and Kev kept pushing them to make a thinner, thinner grind. And this ended up coming down to only 17 and a half thousandths behind the edge. And so at the end of the day, this actually is a fantastic fantastic slicer. And it just feels really, really good in a bunch of grips. But if you watch that video, one of my biggest complaints about this knife is that the handle itself just felt kind of bricky to me. And that is something that has been tremendously fixed here. I love, love what's happened here. So let's get going and talk about this blade. We've got just under three inches, actually about like 2.8 inches of overall blade length, but only about 2.6 sharpened here. But our blade stock has been thinned out. That's a, a kind of a theme of this knife. It's thinned out in ways that are really, really nice. So this blade stock is only just under 120 thousandths and it comes down to an amazing 14 thousandths behind the edge. And the result of this is that this is a fantastic slicer. It just never gets that thick to begin with and it starts off really, really darn thin. So this is the kind of knife that just glides through something like cardboard really, really easily, especially because this is just such a good ergonomic knife. That's something that carries over here. The blade shape is what Kevin has called his sheep's poon knife. I just, I can't, I have a hard time saying that out loud. It just sounds kind of dirty to me, um, but it's because it's a sheep's foot that has this kind of harpoon quality here. It's something that honestly looks kind of weird. I always thought it looked like a bird, but it works ergonomically really, really well. This part here acts as a thumb ramp. This part here either acts as a thumb spot if you're going to be pushing a lot of force with your thumb or a really, really good finger spot if you're going to be pushing with your finger in a pinch grip. So this is definitely a very good pinch grip knife. And then even though it's not uh, it's almost a completely flat edge down at the bottom, but you do have a little bit of belly, which means you can actually make contact with more points than just the tip, but it's a, it's a knife that's really, really good at cutting with the tip. So this is a very, very good utility cutter knife. Like one of, them, one of the best types of blade shapes you could have for that. And talking about the blade shape, basically what's happened here is they've just made it shorter. Like the geometry of everything up here is nearly identical. Technically speaking, this is a, this hole here is a little bit pulled in, but for the most part, everything up to the front of the harpoon thing is basically exactly the same. And what's happened is they just cut the nose off. And so what that means is that all of the cutting geometry here is exactly the same. And it means that if you are pushing your thumb like this, you don't have a ton of extra space up here before your thumb. If you're trying to like push a lot of force through something really, really stiff, you probably want to hold back here with your thumb on the end because that's the big difference between these two. If you have your thumb in one or the other, you just have less blade <laughs> in order to be able to work with. They did a really nice job with this sharpening twill. You can see that the plunge grind, the thing that takes them from the full thickness, the thinness behind the edge, ends all the way up here. And so you've got this entire distance here to sharpen. Now, it's not like crazy deep, but one of the reasons why that they, this is where it is is because they wanted to keep this space right here 
uh, the full thickness of the blade so that it's extremely comfortable. This is a smaller knife, but something you can very easily get a full four finger grip on. You can see I wear medium glove size hands and I actually have a little bit sticking out, even though this is such a overall small knife. It's because they designed it to have this fantastic choke up grip. Technically speaking, I can actually get four fingers all the way back here, but I never would. This just feels instantly perfectly comfortable. They did the same thing along the top here where they crowned the spine within this space. This part here is flat and so if you're pushing right there, it's like a nice flat surface for you to rest on. But if you are putting any pressure in here, this entire part is crowned. And it's actually a really cool effect. So you don't normally see people crowning a spine around a, a corner like this or a curve. And you especially don't see crowned spines on freaking budget ice. When we get to the cost of this thing, holy freaking crap, it just blows my mind. And so overall, Everything that I liked about the original blade is still completely present here and is actually significantly better just because of that thinner blade stock. I love, love, love this blade. And honestly, I love, love, love this handle. I was not expecting to say that. I actually didn't get the blue my card one. It sold out before I could get it. I didn't get it because I just didn't think I'd really care that much. I knew I would, I'd like to check it out, but I didn't think I'd, I'd fall in love with it the way I have. Because just the handle on this, it just, yeah, it felt bricky in my hand. I just, and I'd forgotten that Kevin said they contoured it. And that makes all the freaking difference in the world combined with this thinner scales. So let's talk about this. If we look at the full thickness of these two handles, we're talking a, 0.428 inch versus 0.515. So it's significantly thinner, even at the thickest part down here. Like, oh yeah, look at that. But the big thing, this contours out. And so this actually gets quite thin around the edges. And so it just feels, see, my when, when I say something feels bricky in my hand, it means that it just doesn't melt into my hand in a certain way. And yes, flat slab scales like this do mean that you have very good kind of positioning and orientation, locating in your hand, like you know exactly how it's oriented, but it just doesn't melt into your hand the way that contouring does. And even though this isn't dramatically contoured, it's enough that this, this has that melt into your hand feel. And I just, I love it. That extra thinness and that contouring really truly makes this knife a worlds of different. And it goes from being a handle that I didn't really care about to a handle I genuinely really, really like. One of the things I complained about on it is that this top corner meant that in a pinch grip like this, it didn't feel very good because I was pushing, actually I'll just show you on this one. It meant that I was pushing around this kind of wall right here and around this corner. It didn't feel super natural. I like it when handles curve back right there in order for this to, uh, the exact grip to feel good in my hand. But this subtle amount of contouring here means that this space right here just goes away. And so it doesn't feel like this brick. And plus the entire thing is thinner in a way that doesn't feel like a little cliff right here. And so the end result is in a pinch grip like this. If you do end up holding it in this style of pinch grip where you wrap around, like kind of the way you'd hold a chef's knife, this actually feels comfortable finally. And I, I don't know, I, I, <laughs> all I can say is I, I legit Ultimately, cannot believe how different this knife feels in my hand. Moving back to the clip, we have a full deep carry clip. It is reversible. You can see that there's plenty of space right here, even though it's not fully recessed screw. And this thing weighs 3.1 ounces. So it's just a tiny bit over that ounce and inch mark, but it doesn't feel heavy. The balance point is right about here. And that is a little bit further back because that would be where you'd want it if you were choking back all like this. I just don't anticipate people are gonna do it. But I don't feel like this is unbalanced. Like you do feel a little bit of extra weight in the back. And I think it's in part because there's is this full backspacer back here, but I would much rather have a full backspacer than have like little standoff posts. I, I think this is a better trade-off. And it's such a short blade that honestly, I don't worry about you like kind of losing a sense of where the tip is because it's gonna be right where your finger is. It's just not long enough for you to lose a sense because your kinesthetic sense of where the tip of your finger is is going to tell you exactly where the tip of the blade is. Let's go and talk about action. So this has exactly the kind of pop open that QSP is known for being able to do on their budget end. So this is indeed QSP. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier and it has the exact same kind of BAM open action that I've learned from other QSB OEM stuff like the Kvist variant. It just is so snappy. It really, really pops and it goes home so easily. Part of that is the blade shape having enough weight out here and enough of a gap right here that the, the weight of the blade is further out, so its lever arm distance is pretty far, but it takes so little effort. This knife does not feel like a budget knife. It feels with the contouring and the crowning there and just how snappy this is, it does, it feels like a knife way above its price point. Again, when we get to that price point, 
It blew my mind, it'll blow your mind. Access to the lock bar is really easy. You have a recession right here and it's easy to push on this. There's no like champ or anything like that, but it's not at all uncomfortable because it's just not that strong of a pressure here. You, you get that really good pop by having fully deep engagement of the detent ball. And so that's the other part. A heavy enough blade and just not a super strong lock bar means that the thing goes home with just the tiniest little shake. So let's finally talk about the price on this because we're about wrapping up. This is $75 and it's an exclusive to White Mountain Knives, which means you can use a code like NERD10 or because this is Lefty's Lefty EDC or I think maybe Lefty10, I forget, and you can get 10% off. That brings it out at $67.50. And that is kind of crazy to me because this is a wildly good knife for $67.50. And this isn't a prototype or something like that. This is the actual production sample. This is representative of what you're actually going to get. And it is incredible. It falls to your nail, flicks open, and it just feels so dang good in my hand. I just really was not expecting to be able to say that about something based on this doubt, just because that handle in the past left me wanting a little bit more. And honestly, you get it in this. I was not expecting that. It blew my mind. It's really, really cool. Let's move over to the other one. Okay, what do we have here? This is the nip. This is a tiny little knife. Our blade length is just over two inches. It's just about 2.2. So if you do have a two inch blade limit, you're definitely going to be enough over that that it's not going to qualify. But our sharpen length here is just under two inches at 1.967. We have the exact same blade stock on that other one of 0.119, so just under 120,000. So it's not like crazy thin, but it's thin enough. But the crazy thing here is how good this hollow grind is. This is being OEM'd by Kubi, and they nailed the hollow grind in this. It gets so wicked thin. We're talking 12 thousands behind the edge. I actually got 11 thousands in a couple spots, but 12 on average. And this thing is slicey as heck. And it has such a wonderful little tip if you're trying to do a utility cut. It is perfect for that. This is another case where they did a good job with the sharpening choil. You can see that the plunge grind is ending all the way up here, which means you have plenty of space to sharpen. And it also means that you've got plenty of distance right here. You've got the full stock. So this is another knife that even in my hands, I'm getting a four finger grip. Now it does have this little nook back here that lets you roll off. That's something I really like to see on knives if they're particularly small, because it just makes it a lot more comfortable if you don't get that full finger on there. And importantly, we've got jimping up here a little bit further forward, almost Voxy in style, which means that it feels really, really good and secure in this kind of hammer grip. But they also did a really cool thing. I love this. This chamfer up here wraps around. I mean, seriously, when have you ever seen that? I know this is like really, really small and not like super important, but I honestly can't remember the last time I saw a chamfer round a corner without any kind of apex in the middle. It's just a really cool look, but it also means that this edge up here feels kind of like a crown spine. And so it's actually very soft. Sometimes I complain that the edge corner of a, of a smaller sheep's foot of your Warren Cliffy knife doesn't have a comfortable comfortable place for you to put your finger on. But this is actually very, very comfortable for you to wrap around. And I love when you're able to put your finger in this kind of spot and a pinch grip because it just means you have a really good indexing spot and you feel really, really locked in. So this knife is weirdly useful. It's a thin enough blade stock and it has a thin enough grind and a good enough positioning here that even though it's not a ton of blade sticking out, you can actually push through some serious cardboard with this, like double walled stuff that normally is kind of difficult and you want something a full good grip on. But this just just glides right through and it does feel secure and comfortable in your hand. Let's move back to these handles. I think these just look really freaking cool. I love what they've done here with this micro milling striping along the top. You can see that there's a little tiny indentations as you go. And what's really, really cool is that it's thinning out in a way that means that the angle of this is changing. And so up here, it's a thinner knife. And back here, it's a thicker knife because these surfaces come up to be almost flush and flat at the top. The reason why they're doing that is to make it in line with this clip. Now, one of the suggestions I said to Kevin, I don't know if he's going to do it for the production version or not, I encourage him to pull this line down slightly to be flush with the clip. And the reason is because it would do the exact same thing where this would change angles it goes, but it would just become slightly less of a point right here. Now this isn't like a sharp point by any means, but when I'm holding in this kind of pinch grip, I definitely feel this point. It's this 
this point right there, not the one above it, that. That's the thing I'm feeling in my hand. And it gets a little bit uncomfortable if I'm starting to really push down a lot of force. So I would like to see that smoothed out just a tiniest little bit. Another super nitpick kind of thing is I tend to care when you can feel the screw sticking out into a chamfer. So I really, really love the fact that this is a flush screw right here and not a little domed bubble top screw, but I would actually prefer to be a domed bubble top screw right there so that it would kind of blend into that chamfer a little bit more. But I also love this chamfer down here. This is really cool. Uh, the, luckily, this is already being changed for the production version. This, this cutaway here is being pulled out. So the one only one true real complaint I had with this knife and that Kev already knew immediately himself is that access to the slot bar is a little bit weird. What's going on here is you're being forced into this corner at the top and that happens to be where this flipper tab comes down. And so you can see it travels through that path right there. And so on this prototype only, it's a little bit difficult to close this in a way where this doesn't stop above the detent ball right there. Oh, I forgot to mention that over here. This is a nine degrees to close and it falls to your nail. That's amazing. This is also a pretty early detent. This is 12 and a half degrees. That's really, really good. But this thing still hits your finger in just the right way. But don't worry, this is all being fixed. He already sent me a picture of what it's going to be changed to and he's pulling this back and making it so you can push down here and it's going to be completely fixed. But let's talk about that flipper tab for a little bit. This flipper tab is delightful. It's the kind that is very short and forward facing. It's sitting in front of the pivot and it's leaning forward like that. And that is a very, very good combination because what it means is that you get to pull on this front as like a little bit of a hook, it has excellent, excellent jimping, and you get to maintain contact for a much longer distance. Your average flipper tab starts right about there. So if you look at where this tip is right here, it's not all the way closed, remember? And if I were to emulate this being a regular flipper tab, it's coming from this point, not fully closed, to there, and then I'm losing contact with it because at this point it's now below the handle scale. And so I can only accelerate the blade from there to there, about that far of a distance. With this kind of flipper tab, it's all the way close. So it's all the way up here, and I'm able to maintain contact all the way out to here this far of a distance. So it's almost twice as far that I'm able to maintain contact and accelerate the blade. And the result of that is Holy crap, that is an excellent snap. I love, love this flipper tab. It works so well. This is such an authoritative snap. And it's a small knife, so you don't expect it to be an authoritative snap. And it blows my mind authoritative. It is so dang good. And since this is so dang good, and because this is so dang good, it's a really easy thumb flicker. And I'm not very good at thumb flicking whole knives, so the fact that this one is so easy to do, ugh. All of the deployment methods in this are fantastic. While I have it closed here, one of the kind of small details that I really love is just the way that this all fits and curves together. I mean, it d disappears up there, so it's not like it lines up with anything going on up there, but it means that I find that this just feels really nice in my hand. It's kind of a little nugget. I love pushing my finger into this little nook. And I know this, this is maybe not the kind of thing that everyone does, but I like when I have a little tiny nugget knife in my hand to just kind of hold it like a worry stone. And this space just feels really, really good. So I said this is a little bit of a nugget knife. Okay, so the thickness here, this is not a thick knife. This is like still under half an inch, it's 0.46, but it's not so crazy thin that this thing disappears in your hand. That's part of what gives it this still really solid grip is that it has enough thickness to it that it fills out your hand. It feels just really, really good. But something that's going on here, and I actually don't know if this is going to happen in the final version. This is a little bit of a nugget in my hand because it's just over three ounces, 3.06, and that's not heavy at all. It's a very light amount, but this is, remember, a 2.2 inch blade. And so that feels heavy for its size, but I don't actually know if that's gonna carry over. One of the things about this is that this is a full titanium knife but with a steel liner. And honestly, don't get freaked out about that. That's the correct choice here. You want a steel liner on a knife like this because you can't make this thick enough to have a steel lock bar insert if you were to have a titanium liner without making the entire knife much thicker. And so to keep this thin, it's a good thing to have that steel liner. The thing that I don't get is there's a steel liner on this side. I don't understand. Let's bounce some light up in here so you can see what I'm talking about. So it is very skeletonized, but there is still a full steel liner on this side. And just, I don't understand why you would do that. Like this is a titanium handle. You had to mill out titanium to fit in that liner. Why wouldn't you just not 
put the liner in? Like, why wouldn't you just leave it as a milled out tie handle? I expected that to be the case because it's made by Kubi and it's very, very similar to this knife. This is the Kubi Pike and it's a Parsons design. And this is the knife that Kev actually used as kind of a test run to see how Kubi would do with a milled titanium steel liner knife. And this knife, if we look up in here, does what I expected. This side is just titanium with some pockets in it and the weight is a lot lighter. So I don't, I just don't understand why you would bother putting a steel liner in this side. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So if they drop that, if they take that out and just make this a, a milled out tie side, I think that will drop the weight down some. I hope they do it. I don't understand what's going on here, but you know, even if they don't, even if this is exactly how it comes, like I said, it's only three ounces and that is a very small amount of weight for a knife. It also, honestly, there's a lot of people that will like the fact that it has a little bit of a nugget feel. There's a, I know a lot of people that really value that in a smaller knife. The pocket clip here is not super duper springy because of how long it is. I think aesthetically, I wouldn't want it to be much longer and it still is easy enough to slide in out of the pocket, but it's just a little bit stiff. So if they did make it just a hair longer, it would be a little bit more flexible. You can see that this clip is reversible. And one thing they did is left it with this extra screw just as a hole. Honestly, I think this is the right choice. What that means is that this top screw right there is going to go into there and this back one go into that spot and you don't have an extra screw in here filling that in. Some people are going to have that hole really, really bug them, but I actually would rather have that hole than have an extra screw. And I'm also really, really glad that there's not a little milled out spot right here. Now, some folks would go the route of having only one hole, but that milled out spot, but then you have that little kind of filler tab thing. And at the end of the day, I thought this would bug me and it just doesn't. Maybe it's been bugging you this entire video. And sometimes this is the kind of thing that drives me nuts, but it just, I just find that it doesn't on this knife. And so uh, I think this is the kind of thing that I will absolutely accept in order to make this accessible to left-handed folks. And then this brings me to one last thing. This isn't a, a complaint for me because I don't use lanyards, but for folks that do use lanyards, I've told Kevin a million times to stop putting lanyards on the tops of his knives, because if you do, what that means is that the lanyard comes out the top not the back and so it has to wrap over and so if you try to hold it in your hand you can have a little lump right there instead of being able to line right up with the knife but like I said I don't use lanyards so this isn't something that's going to bother me whatsoever but it might make it be a deal breaker for you and I also recognize that he couldn't super easily do that differently like there's just because of where this screw needs to be you can't really do the standard post at the back maybe you could do a post like right there, oh, I was getting really, really close. I don't know. Now, I don't know what the end price is gonna be on this, and I also don't know what the end steel is gonna be. I know it says D2 right there, but that's just for the prototype. That's a very common thing to do for prototypes. But because this is a full tie knife, it's gonna be in a premium steel, I'm pretty sure. I think this is going to be definitely not a budget knife, at least not the way this is. I don't expect this to be crazy expensive, but I do expect it to be at least twice the price, if not more than this. And at the end of the day, that feels perfectly fine for everything you're getting here, especially compared to everything else in this kind of general competition. This knife feels really, really nice. So my end feeling about both of these, I kind of raved through this entire video, but I was I was really surprised at how much I loved both of these knives. I've been liking a lot of the stuff that Kevin and Colin have been putting out lately design-wise. It's just really kind of hitting for me. But both of these are absolute winners. I'm really surprised at how much I loved this one, and I knew I was going to love this one, and I absolutely did. So Hope you guys enjoyed this. Go check this one out on White Mountain Knives. Use my code NERD10 to get 10% off and keep following Devo to figure out when this eventually is gonna drop. I think you're gonna want both of these. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.